And so today we want to talk about faith. And, and uh, there's a lot of good things talked about faith uh, by a lot of preachers. And, and um, we want to just kind of run through some things here um, in Matthew. And, and um, I was just reading yesterday and I thought, you know, this would be really good to talk about because we got to get a handle on this. We know that James says a double-minded man, he can't receive anything from the Lord. So we know that it does take belief to get something, right? It does take belief. But in one area, you seem to be weak. In another area, somebody else seems to be strong. And so that's why we kind of pray one for another because you go, oh, God will do that. Why, why do you believe that? Well, he's done it so much. For it. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? And then, and then there's another, another area in your life you go, I just don't have faith for that. And somebody else says, I do, I do, I have faith. And nothing comes from heaven but through faith, amen? That's just, that's just the way it is. And anything the Bible says that you receive that's not by faith from God, he says it's sin. That you don't get through the faith of God where God wants to give it to you and you, you ask God for it and believe him for it. In um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, Jesus enters into the ship and his disciples... Um, and his disciples followed him. Behold, there rose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with water. But he was asleep. And we know the story. In verse 25, the disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds, and there was a great calm in the sea. Well, they had Jesus with them. We have Jesus with us, right? Sometimes we think he's asleep too, but he really isn't. And if he even is asleep, and he's not, he, he kind of said, why are you so fearful? I'm with you. I'm with you. It's impossible for you to die before your time. It's impossible for you to be destroyed. We perish. And he goes, no, you don't. No, you don't. O oh, thou of little faith. Oh, ye, don't you have a, just a little faith? How much faith does it take to calm a storm? How much faith does it take to save a man? Just a little bit, doesn't it? We got born again with just Jesus, I need you in my life. And there was that moment of reaching up to God and reaching for the hand of Jesus. And a miracle happened and the Spirit of God came down into you and you got born again. You were saved by faith, right? Through faith. You got born again. And it's the only way it happens. Peter and the, the disciples are going to die, so they think, and I, I truly believe the weather was probably bad enough, they were going to perish. But Jesus, it says, don't you just have a little bit of faith? There was a question mark there. Don't you just have a little bit of faith? Because that's all it takes. He went down here into, into um, Matthew 17. If you run over there, you'll see how much faith does it take to save somebody or to deliver somebody. Here we go into uh, 17, 19. And then came the disciples apart from Jesus and said, why couldn't we cast the spirit out of this little boy? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief, it's overshadowing your faith. It's like fear that overshadows. Oh, we're fearful. And God says, don't be fearful. Don't have unbelief in you because when I'm with you, I'm on your side. You're with me. You're born again. You're on God's side. 
And they were wondering, well, how is it that Satan has more power than us right now? And Jesus says, not because you lack power, it's just because you have unbelief in you. Not because you lack power. Because he goes on to say, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence in yonder place, and it shall move, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That just kind of covers everything, doesn't it? Unhindered faith. How much faith did it take? Just a little bit. Not much at all. And yet, we live this Bible, we live this, this whole thing by faith. This walk with God is by faith. And it's so important that we have areas of that down in our life. When was the last time you had a miracle happen? Oh, it's been a long time. I don't know if I ever have, or I, yes, I do. If you have provision, like Sue was saying, Susie was saying, is there provision made for you? Can you see it here and there and there and here? You got some faith going on. Be encouraged, amen? And when something else comes up against you and you're fearful, hold on. Start thinking about those times that God came through for you with just a little bit of faith. How much faith does it take to move that mountain? Just the, he said, just a little bit, not much at all. Just unhindered, just unhindered. Get out of the unbelief and grab a hold of the hand of Christ. Peter was walking on the water in, in Matthew 14, 31. And, and he even asked Jesus, can I go, come out and walk on water too? And he says, come on. And when he saw the big waves, he got what? Fearful. And we know that doubt stopped the Holy Spirit. And we know that fear stops the Holy Spirit. And what did he do? He began to sing, didn't he? We know the story too well. And that's so important, but it's a, it's a story that we need to get down in us. And when we feel fear or we feel doubt, say no. I remember I had a, a time in my life when I didn't know that I had this, a spirit of fear. It was just overwhelming. I get up, the, get up in the morning and I had to go to the office and the, the things that was going on in the office, I just wanted to puke. I just, I just didn't want to face the day. It was so just terrifying to me. And once I figured out that God has not given me a spirit of fear, and once I found out it was a spirit of fear and I dealt with it, and I'd lived that life of fear for enough years. And I was seeing things happen. And so it's like, God, what's going on? When I got on top of this thing and I would feel fear, I would shut the door to that thing. I said, no, I will not feel that no more. Never again will I entertain that spirit of fear anymore. When you get, it's kind of like, getting thrown in jail you go no I'm not going back <laughs> and you pull your pistol I'm not going to jail and yeah you ever see that in a movie no, I'm not going back there and he's going to go out with a, he's going to fight it with all he has within him and that's how we have to feel about this fear or doubt when we feel it say no we have to be strong abrasive about that thing no I'm not going there because when Peter feared the wave he began to sink all the once he was walking on water and now he looks down and it's up to his knees and he feared even more you know how it's kind of like a snowball effect that's how it works in the spirit realm it's kind of like a snowball effect the devil comes after you he grabs you, and then he gets on top of you. And then he's working you over. It's like, golly, if I could have just turned around and rebuked him, or I could have just turned around and, and or gotten a safe place, but he's on top of me now, and he won't, he won't get off of me. You ever, growing up, you ever get your siblings ever get on top of you? And then you couldn't move, you couldn't move. They had you. And then the big old goober would start coming down. He, ah! Why didn't I run a little faster? He or she's on top of me. I can't move. Or they got the pillow syndrome. You're going to die. And then the pillow goes over. He goes, oh. 
And so the next time they're after you, you run harder and you run for all that's within you so they can't get on top of you because they got the pillow in their hand. And see, that's how we should be when we, we feel that doubt and unbelief because we don't want it to escalate to the point where the devil is now on top of you. Now you've got to deal with that. Amen. And it just, it just, now it's a gigantic problem. So we see that Peter yelled out to Jesus. First clue. You cry out to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, save me. And Jesus got back and he says, you know, the saving part was okay because you cried out to me. And that's just kind of where we're at lots of times. We're crying out to Jesus. Jesus says, you don't really need to get that far. You didn't need to get in over your head here on this whole thing. You just needed to believe that when I said, come on out and you're walking on water, keep walking on the water. And whatever comes your way, say no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to walk on up over you. I'm walking up over this big wave. Because Satan, he's the one that brings the waves in. Say, nah. And then he's looking for you to doubt. Because he sees that the Spirit of God diminishes. Because it all operates off the law of faith. It all operates off the law of faith. That's why you get together. Because you can't do it all by yourself. A man's incomplete without a wife. That's the way it is. Woman's incomplete without a man. A person, a family's incomplete without a church. Just the way it is. You can't do it by yourself. God has never de designed it to, to, for it all to be done by yourself. It don't work. It's just the way he's done it. So, Peter's walking on water. And when you feel that fear coming on you, you see it as someone with a death sentence for you. And you go, no, I refuse to fear. And I have faith instead. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the thing that you need to make everything work in the spirit realm. It cannot, should not, ever be allowed to be hindered in your life. Amen? Now, if you truly have faith, you will be praising God. You will be in a one accord with a group of people because you already know that's how God works. And that's faith in itself. That you know that God don't work like this. He works like this. He works in groups where two or more are gathered. There I am in the midst of it. So by faith, you're believing in the word of God. So you get together with your husband. You get together with your wife. You get together with your church people. You get together and you get in one accord and you're there. And what is that? That's faith. God's going to reward you according to your faith. Amen. He's going to reward you according to your faith. What's your faith? I believe we need to get together. I believe we need to pray together, honey. I think we need to get together with their children and teach them that they need to be praying together. Now, you pray for your sister. You pray for your brother. You pray or you die. You bring them up in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from that, right? You, you bring those children up where they never pray. What you're teaching them is unbelief in God's system. That's real sharp, isn't it? And, God, and a person say, well, why am I blessed? Why is our family not blessed the way it should? Because you didn't teach your children. You're not teaching your children. God says, you start teaching them, I'm going to bless you. Because those children are going to grow up and bless me with their praise, and I'm going to bless them again and again. See how the whole thing works. It's all belief in the system. It's all believing in the system. Well, I, I don't believe it makes a difference. Whether we get with those church people. God says, well, that's what I died for. That's why I'm there. I, you'll find me in the temple at 12 years old. You'll, I'm there. Why not you? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe. 
I have my own God right in my house. I worship God in my own home. Oh, by yourself. Oh, by yourself? I've heard people say that so many times. I don't go to church because those hypocrites are there. They're on that front row saying hallelujah. But that's a system of God. God says, go to church. You'll find me there. Why were you looking everywhere for me, Jesus says. Did you not know that you would find me in my father's house? Didn't you understand that I'd be at my father's work? Didn't you under, don't you understand that I'm here to, not to do my will, but God's will? Jesus, how come every one of your prayers got answered? Hello. He understood the system. He understood. And he moved in it. He moved in. He didn't have a problem with it. Amen? He moved in. He didn't have a problem. He wasn't trying to create, well, I, I, I don't believe this. And I don't, hey, he didn't do that. He just got in there and did it. Amen? If you have a little bit of faith, how much can you do? You can move that mountain. If it's unhindered, you can move a mountain in your life. If it's unhindered. Do you know where, you know where, remember the woman with the issue of blood? And she said within herself, she said, if I can just get to Jesus, if I can just get to him, She says, I can be made whole. And then Jesus, everybody's touching him and everybody wants to get healed. And the, and the 12 are there around him. And, and Jesus says, who touched me? And one of the disciples says, what are you talking about, Jesus? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's touching you. No, but he said, I felt virtue leave me. And he turned around and he saw the woman. And she told him everything. That she had been diseased for 12 years. And he said, woman, thy faith has made thee whole. But where did she get the faith? Why 12 years? What was going on here with God? Why did they even mention 12 years? Because they're trying to tell you something. This is God's number, God's time. This woman had the call of God in her life to go touch that man, touch the hem of his garment. She was diseased for 12 years and God was trying to say something here. God was trying to say this. He put it in that woman today's the day it's been 12 years here comes perfection of government for the government it's upon his shoulders this is the Christ this is the son of God he has 12 disciples this is all significant and you've been sick for 12 years go get them so she pressed through the crowd because there was something inside her by the spirit of God saying touch that man Today, now. So she pressed through, touched him. Because it had been 12 years. She had dealt with this problem. 12 disciples are out there. But the virtue of God left Jesus and went in and healed her. And he turned around and said, who touched me? They all had faith. They all understood. But today was this woman's day. And the 12 meant something. When the, see, those, the, the Jews understood about numbers. They understood. And when she said, I've been diseased 12 years, it was like having a V8. They understood. They understood numbers. We don't understand numbers. Some people do. Some people don't. But we don't understand numbers. They operated off numbers. When Matthew wrote, he talked about the, the generations, the 14 generations. And he went through them, all the generations, because it all meant something. It all meant something. Twelve. Jesus fed the 5,000, and how many baskets of fragments did he take up? How many can say 12? What God was trying to say here 
is these 12 men, Jesus was trying to say, they are the perfect government. They are the New Testament. They are divine, sent by God. They're sent by God. Look what's going on. When they took up probably the, the, the quadrant of 50s that were set down up to the 5,000, it probably didn't mean anything to them. They probably didn't know. But when the disciples took it up and they go, how many baskets? It's 12. Jesus says, get a clue, guys. There's 12 of you, 12 baskets. What's 12 mean? It's a perfection of government. You guys, your names are going to be written in the 12 foundations, the 12 layers. Each one, it's going to have one of your names in it in the new Jerusalem. It's founded upon the rock. You're the rock. Isn't that neat? Who would ever thought of that? Who would ever thought? The woman, 12 years. She says, Jesus, please heal me. I will, I will. I'm going to heal you. She's probably praying to God. She says, oh, Jehovah, Yahweh, heal me. And God says, two more years. I'm sending the man with the 12. Two more years. I'm sending you. You're going to meet him on the street. And he, you're going to get healed. I'm going to put it in you to press through the crowd. She was a woman of faith. But faith came in her that day. She was moved by the Spirit of God. Let me tell you, in the presence of the Lord... Faith will rise up in you. In the presence, if you can get in the presence of God, faith will rise up in you. Because the faith of God will be put into you. That's what happened to that woman. The faith of God was put into her. How could she say within herself? Who had taught her about faith? Who had taught her about this Jesus? Did she just hear it by word? And for whatever reason, she had all the strength she needed to say, if I could just press through. No, she knew. She knew inside of herself, somehow, some way, and I'm telling you, God put it in her. In the presence of the Lord, faith will rise up in you because faith will come down into you. And that's why when you read this verse, as it is written, eye is not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. How will you ever know? It's by the faith faith. It's by the Spirit of God putting it in you to go, to go in a certain direction and go in faith. And he puts that in you. He is your all in all. He's your everything. You can't believe without him. You can't believe without his presence. You can't believe without his divine call. Jesus told the disciples, it's not for them to know the mystery, but for you to know the mystery. For them to know the mystery? Yeah, and believe the mystery. Because they, he asked Peter, he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? We know that what they're saying out there, but who do you say that I am? See, that was the big question. Well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist, come from the dead. But he says, who do you say that I am? And see, that's the big question for you and I. Who do you say that Jesus is? If you think he's a scoundrel, if you think, well, he's not going to work, if you think anything unbelief in that, see, that's not good. You got to believe that he is what he says he is. Amen. You got to believe what he wants you to believe for the moment, for the time. Today's your day. You got to be close to him. Let me tell you, that's where faith really grows. But God has revealed them unto us. What? His ways. He's revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things. So God's going to reveal to you things by the Spirit because you're in the presence of God. See, that was revealed to her by the Spirit. Get out there. You've got to get, you got to touch this man of Galilee. You've got to touch the hem of his garment. He's a priest of God. All that came to her. She heard the commotion. Who knows, she maybe opened the door and looked out and the Spirit of God came on her as it came on Saul, as it came on David. And she pressed through and got the prize. It was her day, 12 years. It was her day. But God reveals those things to us and that's how faith grows inside of us, in the presence of the Lord. Not just by not just by confessing something. 
I'll just confess it over and over. No, in the presence of God. Make sure the presence of God is in your confession. Because Jesus said that the, the heathen, the hypocrites, will, will say many words over and over and over. For they think God will hear them for their many words. But he says, but God knows your needs before you ask him. See, there's a difference. There's a difference. What we have to make sure is that we're not using confession and the amount of confession over and over, thinking that if I say it 20 times, because it, get, it, it will get to be vain repetition to you. You're just saying words after a while. But it's got to be faith-filled, faith-honored by God, revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And when you say it, it comes. See, Jesus knew when it was time to heal. He knew when it was time to teach. He didn't teach when it was time to heal. He healed when it was time to heal. He knew. We can know too. Why? Because the Spirit of God will lead you into all truth. What's the truth for the time? What's the truth for right now? And the truth is, is that it, you need Jesus Christ in your life. You need God in your life. You need to say, I'm changing my ways and I'm turning my life over to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Repent of the wrong ways. Get with God and get the blessing of the Lord in your life. Stay tuned. Pastor Legner will be right back with the conclusion of today's message. Well, praise the Lord. You know, it's good to talk to you today about faith because that's, that's really, everything's got to be done through faith. But I want to I set you at ease here a little bit. God will download that faith into you if you just get into his presence. You get into the presence praising God and get you unified up with him, get in oneness with him, you're going to start knowing things that God wants to do, and those things are good things in your life. You'll know things to come in your life. And people say, oh, you're doing that by faith? Yeah, I say, yeah, but God put it in me. God bless you. Have a good week.